What's up everybody, my name is Bovo, you're watching Bobo Talks, hope you're all doing good today. This video, well this is obviously another video on Jerome Valeska aka the Joker in Gotham. Now you may be wondering why I didn't upload the video about that new Jerome leaked sort of face mole uh, image that came out the other day. Uh, it's just because it didn't, in all truthfulness, it didn't really surprise me and I mean I'm going to talk about it in today's video but I'll get onto as to why I didn't straight away in a minute. Well this video is going to be about that photo but also I'm going to read out some of your uh, theories that you've submitted to the comment sections of some of my joke videos and I'm also going to talk about them what I think about them and then just mishmash a bit of my own theories into it as well. So let's get into why I didn't talk about Cameron Monaghan's upload the other day and it's just mainly because I mean it was a cool photo but you know I feel like with all the other photos that we've got from Cameron um, and other sources they've been really helpful for example the one where he's laying on the table and you see his skin uh, off his face that obviously you know, made us think a lot about, you know, what the hell is going on. And all the other photos as well where um, he's in that sort of waistcoat and he's got basically the whole Joker look going on. That helped us out a lot as well. And I just felt like this one, even though I appreciate it and everything, it's just his smile and I didn't, you know, it doesn't really tell us anything new. I mean, sure, he's got blood on his teeth. I mean, the only thing I can say about it is from photo of uh, Dr. Lee Tompkins standing over Jerome's body in the GCPD and you see the top of his uh, face skin is missing. You can see on this photo it extends down to uh, the bottom of his face as well since you can see basically the red rawness of basically where skin was peeled off uh, around his chin and around his smile so obviously he has no skin around this area of his mouth as well. So apart from that, that's the only thing, you know, that's kind of new about it. Obviously, he's got, a, you know, a wicked smile going on there. But apart from that, I mean, it's nothing we haven't seen before. I mean, in the previous photo where he's uploaded with the waistcoat, we obviously know what basically his whole, you know, half of his face looks like anyway. But for those of you who haven't seen this image, I'm sure I didn't get out to you straight away. But here it is. This is another photo. But as I said, it's nothing majorly new. And I mean, that's all I have to really say about it. So I want to talk about the theories of Jerome because there's so many going around at the minute there's so many that don't make sense because you know all of you are asking and me myself as well you know but what if he was coming out at the end of season two out of that bus and he was walking in his bathrobe how does that make sense if he was in Indian Hill in that little tank how is he dead now I mean there's so much to talk about there's so much to theorize on so let's get started so a lot of people are saying that Jerome may have been you know sedated or like he is still alive in the GCPD where Dr. Lee Tompkin Tompkins is standing over him and he's been alive this whole time with you know obviously being at Indian Hill and that back to I was going to say back to tank from Star Wars that tank and also obviously that trailer he you know jumped out with all the other monsters at the end of season two. Now the only thing that contradicts this and I can't wrap my head around the reason why I can't necessarily support that myself is because the synopsis for the next episode does specifically say Gordon and Bullock discover a follower of Jerome who plans to bring him back to life. I mean it doesn't get any more plain of day than that. I mean, literally, Gordon and Bullock discover the follower of Jerome. You know, the guy in the nice coat, he's actually acted as one of Joker's thugs in The Dark Knight, and it says who plans to bring him back to life. So this must mean that when he was, you know, that scene of him in Indian Hill in the tank, and this scene at the end of season two where you hear a little bit of his laugh, and also wandering around in that bathrobe, I mean, that does suggest, like, if somebody plans to bring him back to life, then he has been dead since Theo Galavan, you know, stabbed him in the neck. This is what causes all of these spider webs of ideas that everyone is contributing to because it's like, well, are they red herrings? You know, is was he alive and then he died maybe? Or wasn't he dead in that scene in Indian Hill in the tank and at the end of season two they were real and he was alive during that time? This is what I mean. It's so confusing. We won't know until the episodes truly air. But let's give a little bit of thought to it anyway and read some of your guys' comments. Now, Marco Santiago said, what if the cult leader guy worked with Strange in Indian Hill and knows how to resurrect people? Well, this could be a very good possibility. I've heard this comment quite a few times, and I think it's a really strong idea. If this cult leader, I mean, which it does say in the synopsis, who plans to bring Jerome back to life, I mean, who else would know how to do that apart from people at Indian Hill? Sure enough, Hugo Strange was like the guy behind, you know, all of that, you know, actually going on reviving Fish Mooney, so on and so forth. But he must have had help, you know, like from Miss Peabody and other members of staff. We, we saw some of them, you know, in their little sort of hazmat kind of suits, sawing out the sort of inmates there or the dead people who they bring him back to life. So he could truly be one of those people when Indian Hill went, you know, were disastrous. So if there is any way that this cult leader is bringing Drone back to life, if he is 
is dead, which, I mean, it kind of does say in the synopsis that, you know, he plans on bringing Jerome back to life, then he's got to have been working at Indian Hill before, and he just really worshipped Jerome from when he was alive uh, to the point where he ended up at Indian Hill. So my idea to sort of add on to your idea is, so when Indian Hill went all to shit, basically, I think that this guy did definitely work at Indian Hill, the cult leader, and obviously when everything went a bit, you know, disastrous at Indian Hill, Jerome could have been in one of those tanks, they could have been working on how to bring him back, and in the meantime, since obviously all went to crap there, he took him out and maybe he was kept in one of those stasis chambers that we have seen in a previous photo that got leaked. Now since he might not know how all the details work in terms of bringing him back, he's kept him in there and that's why it says in the synopsis he plans on bringing Jerome back to life. Yeah, this doesn't really explain why the hell his face got cut off. I mean, some people are theorizing that this is, you know, a step in bringing him back to life, but I don't really see how that's possible. Some people are saying, yeah, it's because maybe he was one of the first people they would have, you know, tested him out on bringing people back to life and then they brought fish mooney back and other people back later on maybe but like it that's I, don't, I just don't think that's good enough now i'm reading more comments another one from emma mclean what if the cult leader worked for strange and because that he knows how to bring drone back to life also that would be how he got drones but and you know the more comments to see like this i definitely definitely do think that this cult leader had some relation to Indian Hill. He was obviously a fan of Jerome when he was alive, and when he found out, you know, he came to Indian Hill and everything went to shit there, he probably kept him preserved in one of those chambers and has been working on how to revive him and gain a cult following for Jerome for when that finally happened. As to why the face is cut off, I still can't figure that one out. Now, some people are saying that this cult leader cut Jerome's face off himself and he wants to try and be Jerome and then Jerome somehow, you know, comes back to life and then kills the guy, you know, the cult leader who took his face from him. But the, even though these theories are really cool and all, I seriously don't think that is the case. I mean, if the synopsis says... Uh, this guy is trying to bring Jerome back to life in this episode and he's gained a whole cult following for Jerome. Why would he, you know, cut off Jerome's face, try to be him, only to like, you know, also try and bring Jerome back as well at the same time? It doesn't really add up. If he's trying to bring Jerome back to life, why would he try and pretend to be Jerome if he wants to bring the original Jerome back to life himself? It is quite possible that another Jerome fanatic from the cult could have cut Jerome's face off, but at the same time, how would that make sense if the cult leader is looking after Jerome's body in that stasis chamber in a top sort of secret location. Now also a lot of comments I'm reading, you know, from Marshall Manson here. It's not that I don't want him brought back, it's the way, it's more that I'm now annoyed with how they fucked up the continuity. Now the whole scene where he was heavily implied to have been brought back by Hugo, where he walks off the bus makes no sense. I completely understand, but I am with the guy who replied back here, sorry, or the lady, Lola Jeromillo. Um, you know, the bus scene was a fun little easter egg hinting that Jerome slash Cameron was coming back. You know, I completely agree with that. I seriously believe that the Indian Hill scene where he's in the tank and also the bus scene at the end of season two, they were kind of red herrings. If anything, it was to sort of tease that Jerome was coming back and maybe... Obviously, by teasing that, they could see how excited the audience would get. And as a result, you know, through seeing how excited the audience is, they would, you know, obviously plan to make an episode, which we're going to see. So their tease kind of paid off, really. And I do understand the frustration because if that teased Jerome, you know, walking out and having been revived at Indian Hill and is somewhere walking around Gotham City, it is kind of annoying that that didn't actually happen and that wasn't Jerome. And also that wasn't Jerome at Indian Hill, perhaps. That is very frustrating, but it was more of a tease, I think, to just see how the fans would react. So as a result, I do truly believe that the synopsis is as concrete as what it is spelling out. Jerome is basically dead, and Gordon and Bullock discover a follower of Jerome who is attempting to bring him back to life. So there are some theories out there of you guys saying that he is kind of coming back to life where he's on that table in the GCPD, but he's just sort of, you know, uh, still KO'd, so to speak, and the cult, you know, leader doesn't realise that his... Uh, attempts of bringing Jerome back to life have kind of worked and that's when he might wake up you know get his face back possibly kidnap Lee maybe whatever the cult leader is doing to Jerome makes him you know reanimate so to speak in the GCPD sort of morgue area and that is where he could possibly wake up in the episode now there are some of you who disagree with this for example I might not be able to pronounce your name cut cut Luke and Chelik, uh, says I think you're wrong you said the cult leader will bring him alive but Hugo Strange already done that. He's just a scumbag who wants Jerome's fans. He's going to steal Jerome's face and put it on himself to enslave Jerome's fans. Then the real Jerome comes and kills the cult leader, then puts his face to himself. Happy ending, basically. Um, 
I, the only reason I don't necessarily agree with that is because you're basically a firm believer that, you know, at the end of season two where he came out the bus and in Indian Hill he was alive then, that means he's been alive this whole time and that the cult leader, you know, therefore can't bring him back to life. Therefore the cult leader has just stole his face and wants to steal his fans. I really don't think that the end of season two and the Indian Hill scene with Jerome in a tank are real. I, I feel like they were honestly just teasers and so therefore Jerome really is kind of dead in present day until obviously the next couple of episodes happen where he gets brought back to life. But that's all I've got time for in today's video everyone. What do you think is the real reason as to why Jerome's face is cut off? I think at this point we can safely say that Jerome wasn't alive at the end of season 2 where that person walked out the bus and the Indian Hill scene in the tank was just a tease also. So therefore, in my eyes, he's dead in present day. He will definitely get brought back to life. But why the hell does his face get cut off? It's really fantastic reading all of your guys' comments. It's really great seeing all the theories you've got going. So let me know if you also agree with me that he was dead at the end of season two and he's been dead throughout season three and he's going to get brought back to life in episode 12 or 13. Why did his face need to get cut off as a result of this? Could it be that the cult leader does attempt to bring him back to life and it may work out later and in the meantime, time he might give up and as a result tries to steal his face and wear it for himself like some of you are saying and then Jerome then maybe wakes up later after the cult leader thinks that his revival with Jerome doesn't work. I don't know everything kind of adds up apart from the point of Jerome's face being removed so let me know all your ideas in the comments below as I'd love to hear them. So as always guys don't forget to expand the description because that is where you can find my Twitter links, my Facebook links, everything social media related so you can stay more up to date with me on anything I upload on this channel and if you aren't subscribed already maybe even consider subscribing now to stay more up to date with all drone videos and gotham related videos and don't forget if you are a current subscriber to this channel make sure you hit that bell button to enable alerts for this channel to make sure you don't miss out on any future drone joker videos that i upload i hope you have a lovely rest of your day thank you so much for watching as always and i'll see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>